Hello, my name is Sang Ho, and welcome to the C-Class webinar series. Following on from last week's webinar by Dave Armstrong on the topic of CHD. Today, we are going to look at the topic of creating Power BI reports from the CHD, our C-Class historical database. And here's our agenda. First, on background and um, introduction, I'd like to give you a high level introduction of C-Class and revisit the topic of CHD by demonstrating one useful application that wasn't discussed last week, that is, it can be used as a data source for KPIs and reporting. For those who are currently using C-Class, this workflow would be familiar. But do you realize that C-Class has been built from the ground up for the mining and metal processing industry? To date, Globally, we have over 350 laboratories using C-Class, spreading over more than 70 countries. And with the recent development of the C-Class VLOX model, we are now able to implement C-Class very rapidly using the pre-configured template approach for each type of the laboratories that we are targeting. We have a very loyal customer base with over 6,000 users globally. Some of this site have been using C-Class since the early 90s, which makes it more than what 30 odd years of non-stop using of the product. C-Class runs on SQL databases, which provide industrial strength database technology. So it can handle hundreds of thousands of samples per year. What does it really mean though? It means that all of the C-Class operational data is stored in a well-structured database, which renders itself to be easily interrogated by a third party reporting tool, such as Power BI that we're using today. And lastly, we can integrate with a third party system readily through the use of CHD. As Dave covered last week, once the, the analytical data, the result have been validated, they are or can be exported to the CHD if the CHD feature is enabled. From today's uh, list of registration though, I can see that not everyone is using the CHD feature. So the question is, why do we run a webinar on uh, reporting from CHD? Well, the reason is twofold. Uh, first of all, CHD has a very simple data structure and it makes, uh, easy, makes it easy to follow. Secondly, the same techniques that we cover today can be applied equally on any databases, including the C-Class main database, which is a lot more complex as it involves something like you know, 100 and 150 tables. Okay, what is Power BI? As we're gonna use Power BI as the tool in this webinar, I'll try and provide a brief introduction to Power BI for those who are not familiar with the tool. Power BI is the business analytics service by Microsoft. It aims to provide 
interactive visualizations and business intelligence capabilities with simple interface. It's simple enough for end users to create their own report and dashboards. Power BI provides a cloud-based service called the Power BI service, which runs on a subscription uh, subscription-based licensing model. I think the current pricing is about ten dollars US per month. Along with uh, a desktop-based interface, they call it Power BI Desktop, which is free. I would recommend that uh, you download this application if you haven't done so to play with it. It is really simple and quite fun to use. Now, Power BI comes ready with a large number of so-called visualizations. However, if you find that the built-in visualizations are not enough, you can download more from the internet. Some will cost you, but most of them are free. There is one main differentiator of Power BI compared to other BI solutions. Here is another view of the previous slide in picture form. Just to reiterate, we can see the following major building blocks. The data source on the left, in this case, our CHD. Power BI Desktop, which we use for designing our report and dashboard. And the ability to publish a report is important for sharing reports with your colleagues within your organization. And the cloud-based Power BI service. And lastly, the ability to view the reports once they've been uploaded to the web via virtually any platform including your mobile phone, which I'll demonstrate later. Okay, the next topic is BI reporting fundamentals. Before we get stuck in building a report or components of it, I thought it's important to take a look at some of the fundamentals in BI report building. First, you need a data source, or in fact, several data sources. And you need to have an intimate understanding of your data. By that, I mean, we need to understand the table structure, the columns within them, and what each column holds, such as this data type, whether it's a string, a number, or date time, etc. And very, very importantly, the relationships between the tables. Yeah. And to the right, you need to be familiar with the tool you're using. As you will see, Power BI comes with many built-in visualizations. Think of this as like ready-made data viewing gadgets that you just select and place them on a page of the report. Apart from that, the ability to uh, filter the data, to go and drill up, drill down, drill through the data is quite important and necessary. As our data source that we'll be using is our CHD. Let's take a closer look at what it contains. By default, CHD has four tables. As you can see here, the job table, the scheme table, the samples, and the result. Each of these tables holds the relevant data in what we call uh, third normal form. I have highlighted a number of fields or columns, those that will be used in the exercises later. 
But today, though, for the purpose of illustrating the power of Power BI, I'm going to use a simple Excel spreadsheet to augment our report to add to add something that will make our data more meaningful. Now we get to the fun bit, which is report building exercises. This is the main purpose of the webinar today. I'll be taking you through a number of exercises of constructing some report elements. Here are some of the report components that I have built, I have built for this session. I'd just like to point out some of the uh, visualization, uh, their name, so that we get a bit of familiarity uh, before we switch to the Power BI desktop application. This is what they call stacked column chart, a pie chart, a simple card, very simple, but very useful when you want something uh, high level. As its name implies, this is a table. If you want to drill down to the column, um, column table format. And this is a slicer, which is used for conditioning or filtering of our information, our data on the page. And lastly, this is one imported visualization. I couldn't find anything suitable from the list of built-in visualizations. So I went and searched the net for a tachometer. There are many, but I chose this one. I'll show you how during the session. And here is what I call a dashboard. So what is the difference between a dashboard and a report? As a very simple explanation, a dashboard is a page that contains high-level data, high-level information, where the visualizations themselves may not be related to each other, but together they provide high-level KPIs uh, and high-level data to senior management uh, who want to have a look at the entire operation. From this, you can then click and drill through to the more detailed report pages, which has all the elements connected to each other. And when you click on one, it will then uh, send the filtering conditions through to the rest of the visualization of the page. Okay, now we'll, last, we'll leave this uh, slide here that is to do with publishing the Power BI report. I'll demonstrate that uh, at the end of the session. We're now going to switch to our uh, Power BI application. Okay, so this is a few of the pages, report pages that I have built for this session. So let, let me just go through that and then show you a very high level overview and then go, I will go you and show you uh, how to add um, visualization to the page. Here is the summary dashboard page, which I show you. Each of these here is a visualization. Now, when I click on a visualization or visual, uh, uh, in short, you can see from the list of visualizations here, this is now highlighted. Okay, so it's a card. Click on the next one. This now is a tachometer. So is this, if you click on this one here, it is a slicer. Yeah, and as you can see, as I click on the a, a selection within a slicer, it sent the message, the filtering message through to the rest of the visual, visualization and then it will, the, they will act upon it. So what it means is what the information we're viewing here is for the year of 2019 for a specific uh, client code, which is the power and utilities. So if you click on that, what about a processing plant? What about a repeat? What about geology, etc.? So that's 
how Power BI work on the page, within the page. Uh, here is, what is it now? It is this one here is called a clustered column chart. And this one here is, they call it a, a tree map, yeah? Which is useful for finding out the top 10 client, the top 10 um, uh, uh, schemes that you use. Uh, the top, in this case, the top 10 um, uh, 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 people who are responsible for certain type of uh, job or samples. The next page is a throughput page. I deliberately leave the bottom part blank because I like to use that to show you how we construct the uh, visualizations above. Uh, so that represent the uh, number of samples um, on based on date validated. So if you click on that, we have here three little icon or uh, button. The field is where I specify the content of uh, the data, what I want to see, and the format uh, tab which allows me to format my uh, my visual. I, I can change the name, I can put uh, labels on the columns, etc. And lastly, the analytics, which not which is, might not be applied, applicable for every uh, visual, but some will. I'll show you a bit later on that. On the uh, left-hand side here, we have three buttons also. Okay, once we open up a database, then Power BI is quite smart. It will try and figure out the relationship between the tables, and then you can, of course, adjust that. So at this point in time, I'd like to start a new session, a, a brand new session of Power BI, and show you how we get to import or read the data from our CHD database. So I'll leave it as it is. I'll start up another session of Power BI. Yeah. And then once it's started, takes a little while because I'm running everything on the same uh, laptop. I use the get data option, which will then present me with a long list of data sources, okay? So today I'm gonna use my CHD, which is a database. So I click on the database to just you know filter down a bit. And out of the list of databases, I select my database type, SQL Server connect and then you try and ask me well what is your database server name now uh, if you don't know what your database server name there are two ways you can uh, find out you go to your cclass.ini file or you can run a C your uh, license application basically is is the server or the machine that hosts your uh, C class database so for me, easiest for me is I'll start my SQL Server Management Studio. I can just copy that from here. This is my database server. Yeah. So I'll put in here. Once I get in, it will ask me out of that, you have several databases. Okay. Which database do you want to open? I'm going to open this one here called CC VLOX CHD. I'm going to copy that, control C, or you can just type it in, but I don't want to type it in. And then you can select the data connectivity mode, either import or direct query. I just leave everything as default and click OK. All right. So it will take a while and come back with four table exactly. So I select more and then load. You notice here, Power BI will go through the motion of trying to map out the relationship. It does a pretty good job 
in 90% of time, I found that it does exactly what I want. Okay, so that is loaded. Now, again, I go to the model button here. As you can see, four tables, relationships are all there. And pretty much is what I need. But if I really want to, I can go to manage relationship and then either add more or change or delete some of the relationship, which I'm not going to do. All right. So that is how we establish the connection and import the data into Power BI repository. The second uh, button on the left is the data view. So when we'll click on that. It's a window or a view that you can just select your table and then it should it should present the data in this window here. All right. Uh, so you can get familiar uh, with your data. And lastly, the top button is the report button, which is the report building uh, canvas. It opens up a, a blank canvas. So you can drop, you know, click. If I want to build uh, a view, I select a visual uh, called line chart. I just click on it and place it in the my canvas, resize it, and then configure my data field in this view here called the fields tab. All right, let's switch back to our uh, existing data. Uh, now, this here, I have uh, four tables and plus a spreadsheet. The content of spreadsheet is pretty simple. It has uh, five columns, client code, and followed by what we call the target and the max, which I'll be using, I'll be needing to make my data more meaningful. Basically, I'm saying that for environmental client, my target from the time of receiving to the time of completion is 48 hours. That's my company standard. But you should not, the lab should not go over 72 uh, hours, etc. All right. So that spreadsheet comes in the form of the Excel spreadsheet. That data comes from the spreadsheet. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to demonstrate that by going to our new um, session and using the button here called Excel, which allows me to import data from Excel sheet. I go to my desktop and here it is, time limit Excel. And then it discovered that it has only one, one worksheet. Okay, if it has several, it will display uh, all, all of them here. That's the one, upload. And then as far as Power BI is concerned, it treats this no different to the standard tables from the database. So it will try and build the relationship between this spreadsheet and the rest. And guess what? It does a good job. It does a very good job. Uh, in that is now somehow it figured out, oh, this has client code, therefore it must be related to the only table that has client code, which is our C-class job table. And that's what I want, yeah. All right, back to our example here. All right, uh, let me go through all the tabs first and we'll come back to this page here and start building some of the uh, visualization. Turnaround is a page where you want to, you know, maybe extract data uh, to show the turnaround time. Now, the good thing about Power BI is with this button enable, if I now click on it and then I say, well, every time I click on a column, I want to drill down. All right. I have several years of data. We have over a million, I think three million uh, rows in the result table, which is you know, substantial. If I click on, let's say, 2019, you go down to my month. 
If I click on uh, October, it go down to my uh, breakdown to my uh, client. If I click on four, no, nothing else. Why? I could have going further down and further down, but in this case, I haven't. All right. So this is the drill down ability, and to set this up is very simple. I'll show you a bit later. And to go up, I just go and click on this drill up, drill up until I get to the top. All right. Uh, because my CHD contains some uh, assays on environmental samples such as pH and chlorine. So I thought, well, why can't I use Power BI to present that data in a meaningful way? Okay. With this one, I have not just a line chart, but I can see here, you can see here, I have a few so-called constant lines. All right. If I select the visual and go to my, I think, analytics, you have here uh, three lines. First of all, the the so-called um, bottom here, the average line, I enable or selected average line, okay? And then it represents, I think this uh, orangey line here is the average line. Yeah, indicated by this color here. But apart from that, that is automatically calculated though. Apart from that, I want two constant lines, okay? That represent my minimum and maximum. So to do that, I go to here, constant line, I just say add one and two. Constant line one has the value of 6.5 uh, for my pH, and constant line two has a value of eight. It will plot here. If I select 8.5, for example, here, and enter, there you go. It now raised my up, uh, upper limit to 8.5. Uh, this page here, uh, I want to illustrate the top 10 uh, people who have uh, the responsibility of validating the jobs or samples. And this is very easy to do as well. So I'm going to perhaps, you know, make it smaller. I can add a bit, uh, another visual later. What about uh, the last page, actual versus target? Okay, from the CHD database, from those four tables, I can see that there are uh, many columns that I can make use of to provide me with useful KPI, such as time from receival, sample receival to completion. If that is my KPI, I can use that. I can plot that. And time for completion to validation. For a commercial lab, time from uh, uh, completion to maybe uh, invoiced or completion to uh, from validation to report. All that, if the data is available, we can plot it. We can represent using a visual. All right, so let's go back to our first, from the simple to the most complex throughput. I want to build the similar gadget or visual underneath here, all right? So first of all, I'd like to build a stack column chart. Here is a stack column chart, all right? So one quirk with Power BI is you need to select away from a visual, otherwise uh, you can't add. So I click here on the blank space, click on my stack column chart, and it try and figure out, hey, I have already have two quadrants filled, so I'll plong that into my third quadrant. All right, so if you go to the uh, field tab, so first of all, what do I want to plot? What numeric data I want to plot? So under value here. Okay, I'm going to put it here, my number of samples, and that I know my data well. As I said before, one of the prerequisites is to know your data well. So if I can just, widen it a bit. From my C-class job table, I have a field called number of samples. I'm going to drag and drop into value. Immediately, without any further qualifications or filtering, Power BI sum up all the uh, numbers in this column called number of samples. And to date, we have nearly 
0.7 of a million. So 700,000 samples, okay, in our CHD. Now we want to uh, break it down uh, to the year, okay, the time. So I can use time validated or time received. It doesn't really matter, okay. So in this case, I've used time validated. I'm going to plot, plot it on here. Now, by default, Power BI give me a very detailed breakdown. I want to go by year, by month, by quarter, uh, by quarter, by day. But day is not very useful for me. I don't want a quarter, okay? But I could leave them there, okay? But do I want to uh, stop there? No, I want to go down, to drill down to the next level, okay? If I click on the column here, uh, even though if I now, okay, uh, to the month, but then when I click on the month, it doesn't go down any further because in my field uh, selection here, I stop there. So let's, what would be our next level? I want to drill down to the client code level, all right? Just drag and drop and now click, it's now go to the, uh, the client level, but nothing else, nothing further. Then if I click on my person plan, what do I want to do? I may want to drill down to um, my job level. Okay, I want to have a look of all the jobs uh, that give me that number. So I know my data well, so it is called pro job. Put it just underneath client code. Click on that, there you go, but nothing further. What, why don't we just put another level down? If I click on a job column, I want to, it to show me all the schemes within that job. Now you can see there's nothing here about the scheme, is there? There's nothing on the scheme in this table. So I'm going to my, have a guess. It is the in the C class scheme table. So I'm going to drag my scheme code underneath here. And guess what? I now have the ability to drill down to scheme, which is not very. Uh, um, interesting because they're all the same number of samples per that. All right, so I'm going to go up and up. Try again. Uh, if I now go down to uh, 2018, August, plant, job, that is the level of details I can get out of a simple drag and drop. Yeah. Now, in the past, without this tool, uh, if you need this kind of a breakdown, uh, you need to go to the IT or to the vendor. Say, well, I want this information, and it will take you, you know, a couple of weeks. But now, with simple drag and drop, you can get pretty much the very useful KPIs or data that you need. All right. Uh, shall we do one more? Uh, this is the a pie chart. All right. Let me just go up first to clear the filtering. I want to build this very pie chart here. So away, click away from it and select my pie chart and it knows pretty well, oh, this is what, uh, where you want. Now, I want to number of samples again. Okay, I always go for the value first, even though um, top down it said legend, details and values, but I always go for the levels of uh, values first. What do I want to represent? I want that represent our number of samples. Again, where is it? It is from the job table. Number of sample, drag into, okay. And then I want to break down this, in this case, just by client code, okay. Client code is my, not legend, it is going up a bit. Oh yeah, it is the legend. Simple as that. Now, when I click on the the largest part of the pie, which is a processing plant, you can see all my visual on the same page, on this page will be conditioned, will be filtered by my action. Release the filter and then carry on like that. All right, so if you can think of the analytics that you need, 
and you can see the data is somewhere you know uh, in the CHD or in the C class database then you can just do this and play trial and error and you get a very uh, good uh, tool good um, KPIs and um, report now if you find that you don't have CHD some labs don't use CHD and you want to work on the C class main database it's equivalently you can do that instead of using C class job C class sample C class scheme you can go to prop job prop job keyword prop job keyword scheme prop job keyword scheme analyte etc yeah all right now let me just check the time uh, yeah we have uh, plenty of time okay let's move on now um, this even though it looks similar to the previous one but this is a different uh, visual this is called a uh, uh, line and stacked column chart all right um, it is pretty much the same but for the exercise uh, I'm just going to do go and um, construct that all right click away remember click away and then select line and cluster column chart all right and then uh, i want to see the turnaround time yeah so i notice here in my c class job table i have a column called turnaround time somewhere here all right. again drag to the column value okay so the two uh, type of graph here one is column one's line I want to use the same thing for my line, all right? But no classification yet. I want to, uh, again, similar to the uh, previous one, I want to con condition on my uh, date. Now, instead of uh, based on date validated, I can do any date here. I have date completed, which is here, date received, date, uh, etc. okay? Any date would do. If I'm I'm keen in uh, the receive uh, date, I use date received, and then long in here again, it gives me all this year. Well, let's just try that. All right. If I now go to click on this this gadget here, if I don't click, it won't do anything. It just condition. But if I click this down arrow, drill down, enable that, it will go down to what quarter, month day which could be useful if that's what you're after yeah we'll leave it like that uh we don't need to try and make it the same as the top now notice here the top chart i have a label here which show me the number of no the turnaround time yeah but this one doesn't so how do i do that i'm going to use um the i think is from the format tab here i have a little thing called data label yes on or off there you go all right i think we can leave it at that we don't need to uh, do more because it will i will be just repeating myself anyway um, you can further uh, categorize it after the date etc all right uh, environmental monitoring well uh, there's no, I not I didn't intend to do anything on this page apart from pointing out that you can use you can add those constant lines using the uh, analytic um, uh, data which is here All right. now responsibility as I make room for this, so I'm going to build something like this. It is another pie chart, but for the sake of uh, getting more practice, let's do it. Click away from any visual, select my pie chart. Now this one here, I want to see who does most of the work, the top 10 people who do most work. Okay, when what do you mean by work? Well, I want to uh, based on let's say for simplicity uh, sake uh, the number of 
samples. Shall we? Yeah, I'll do a number of samples, uh, which is here into my value. And now in this case, validated by validated is my legend. And then no, not not validated by, I suppose. Not 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 that one. So I make a mistake. So I'm gonna click away. Validated by. Do you see that? Validated by is not in this table. So I'm gonna go down. And I think it's in the scheme table. All right. And then click on to legend. There you go. As you can see, this chart is different to this one. Why? It has too many uh, 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 portion. I, I don't want that. I want the top 10 or top 5. So how do I do it? I'm going to do my filter. And then at the moment, the condition is all. I'm going to drop down and I say top N. Okay, I have three mode of filtering, advanced, basic, or top N. Top what? Top five, for example, yeah? Instead of top 10. And enter. Hello? It doesn't seem to register. Oh, top five by value of apply filter. Show items, top five. Oh, top five. There you go. All right. So that's how easy it is to put a, a shall we call it KPI or data view on a page. Lastly, the last tab, which is a bit more advanced. Okay. I want to replicate one of these dial gauge here. Okay, so I'll just click away from it and then using my newly imported visual called tachometer. Now before I do that, I could do that and it was fine. Um, Power BI is quite smart. It can find a space that it can plonk this one onto. Now before I do, I go on, I just want to show you how I imported this from the internet. So I have this ellipse here get more visual the top option is to get more visuals okay that means from the internet it will go and build up the uh, list of visual that people have uploaded okay uh, at the moment i have this category set to all which has a lot of visual here but if i know something okay either via reading the magazine some recommendation from your friends. I can say tachometer and enter. It should go come up with the one that I uploaded and on any other thing. Okay. Or let's say histogram, enter. Here is some chart. Okay. And then from there, you can just say add. Some will cost, some won't. Most of these are free. All right. So once it's uploaded you can now see that appeared in here all right all right before we uh, configure this dial gate here let's have a look at what it holds what it shows us that show us that our actual uh, time the duration between completion and validation is 14.5 for seven hours, okay? And our target is 12 hours, but our maximum allow for this client, which is internal in this case, is um, I think 24, which is here represented here, all right? But if I click on different uh, client, let's say power and utility, which is client, then not only the top part changes, so 
the term allow from completion to validation? The term allow from receival to completion? Uh, is that, sorry, that is, yeah, this target is 48, max is 50, uh, 72, which is for this uh, this gadget here, this uh, DAO here. For completion to validation, the target is 12, which is indicated by this line, and the max is 24, indicated by this line, all right? Now, you will also notice that these four columns, I call it, X because I want the field to be uh, at, the, at the bottom. I have created two new fields or two new columns. In my original um, uh, table, I don't have X complete to val and X received to complete. They have that. I created these two using the Power BI uh, power. And I'm going to create one else to show you because I want to easily use those as my measure, as my data. So I just click on this one first, look at the definition. So from completion to validation, I use a function, they call it DAX, DAX function, which is a language uh, used by Power BI. So I'm gonna copy that. Next, I'm gonna cop uh, create a new column to show you a new column. Okay, using my convention, I want to put all my new columns at the bottom. So I call it X, C to V. And then I'm going to paste that definition. Okay, now if I don't know these uh, functions or the format of the DAX function, there's plenty of resources on the internet. Basically, it said, the difference between they completed and they validated in hours. All right. And once I've done that, if I can now go to my second button here, look at my field, my data for my job. As you can see, very end, I have this here. Okay. Uh, a lot of zero, don't know why, but it should be the same as that one there, which is fine. Yeah, lot zero, but you see, 53 the same. All right, so I'm going to use that newly created column for this new visual here. So what do I need? I need um, to have the value to put in the value here. So I put in here, I want to show the time between completion and validation. By default, it does everything to sum. So I, I don't want that, I want an average. Okay, and that would be a very, uh, that would be sufficient, but it's give me no context, no useful information without the target and my maximum allowed. So that's why I invented this uh, Excel spreadsheet that gives me the target and the max value. And this gadget called tachometer has a field for that. So here is the target value. What is the target value? I'm going down to my Excel time limit here. It is my C to V target. Yeah, I put it into Again, select that to be my, not count, but average. So immediately it gives me this uh, target here, 12 of 12, yeah? Only for this client. But if I go and select an, another client, it knows, ah, this client here, the target is uh, three. All right, see, so had this smart. And then go back to my design. Not only do I want to set the target, but I also want to set my, the the line that's separating, I have two ranges. The line is separating green and yellow. What do I want for that? Well, I'm going to use the same thing for my range two. And also not 
count, but average. For range three, which is the line that's separating uh, yellow and red, I want the max value, which is here. The start of range three is there. And again, average. There you go. I now recreated this gadget. It's the same as that. Ex with the exception of the, uh, the label or the title. Let's do that. Okay, go to my format. Under title, I now have the option to simplify it. Okay, uh, let's do the C to V, there's something like that. All right. And that is our new visual. All right. Now we have a few minutes left. That's all I intend to um, show you in terms of, you know, practical exercises. The next item on my agenda is to show you how we publish the report onto the internet. I, I'm going to start that. And because I logged on earlier, so it doesn't ask me anymore. Otherwise, you would have to log on uh, a report that I uploaded earlier, which is this one here. All right, so how do I do that? I'm going to my Power BI desktop, not this one, this one here. Now, in fact, look, instead of uploading or publishing this one, which is, you take about a minute because of you know, the my slow internet. Okay, uh, I'm gonna upload this. There's nothing there, but I'm going to save that, and I save them. The desktop is fine, okay? X, that's fine, and then I'm going to publish that. Just go through the motion, publish. Do so you want to do that? Yes, and then it asks me which workspace do I want to upload to. I have several here to choose from. Say my workspace, select. All right. There's nothing very, very small, very very um, empty, but for the purpose of illustrating the uh, publishing capability, now it's done. Got it? Go back to my uh, Power BI service and refresh my workspace. All my report, I have a thing called X. It keep prompting me to oh, give your feedback. No, thank you. All right, X, which is here. Oh, X, which is nothing. Yeah. So that concluded our uh, presentation on uh, constructing Power BI report from CHD. Let me go back to my PowerPoint to see what else I have missed. Um, I thought before I leave you, I'll suggest, propose some ideas for you to play with. What about if you're using instrument, you want to maybe uh, create a, a dashboard or report on the instrument utilization, okay? What about work status, uh, workload status? How many samples yet to be analyzed? How many is in progress? How many is yet to be reported? You know, maybe you have finished analysis, but uh, the people who are responsible for reporting is busy. You, know, you want to, to find out that, you can do that. And this kind of information is uh, emitted in, is uh, available, available uh, readily in the C-class main database. And more importantly, how many is overdue? If you have, if you're a commercial lab, let's say, you know, reporting is very important. You need, uh, if you're reported but not invoiced, why? You want to know that. Uh, what about turnaround time, the KPI, okay, etc. And I've come across uh, an Excel report that have this sort of uh, very, very detailed report on a daily basis. That can we use Power BI for that? I believe we can because all the data coming from the c class database, not the CHD, but, or oh, could be CHD as well, uh, because all this data is 
readily available in the CSG as well. That kind of thing. All right, time for some questions. Mm -hmm. 